So then, whereas every other YouTuber right now is comparing, say, the iPhone 15 Pro Max to, say, the iPhone 14 Pro Max from last year, there are a lot of you guys out there who are not that lucky or not that rich enough to basically buy yourself the latest iPhone every year. And what you actually want to see is, say, a real-life comparison to older iPhones out there. And this is what this little mini-series is doing. If you've just watched very recently, I just compared the iPhone 15 Pro Max to the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So if you own one of those phones, do check out that video too. But today I'm continuing on the series. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be comparing the iPhone 15 Pro Max compared to the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And we're going to see what the differences are between both these phones, because there's a big enough gap here this time to actually see some big major differences. So if you're considering upgrading, well, we're going to actually work out if it's worth upgrading for you today, and the way we're going to do this, we're actually going to do some real life scenario testing to find out the differences between both of these phones. But without further ado, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go and get my camera over my desk here. And let's have a look then at the differences of everything that we can actually just see just by looking at these two iPhone models. So then let's start this comparison. As you can see, we've got the iPhone 12 Pro Max on this side. And then obviously on the other side here, what we've got is we've got the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now, straight away, the first thing you're going to notice is that this one here, the 15 Pro Max, when it dims again, and you know, I press it here, there we go. We've got the always on display. That doesn't even exist on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. The other thing as well, talk about the screen straight away, is that we have Dynamic Island this has still got the traditional notch. And not only this, remember we got all those upgrades from the iPhone 13 Pro Max, the 14 Pro Max, and the 15 Pro Max. So I'm talking about, for example, ProMotion display. This is still on 60 Hertz, this one. So you're gonna see that as a massive gain straight away. The bezels are actually smaller. You can see in there if I light up the screens that they're definitely thinner here on the 15 Pro Max. You're gonna get all those features, like I said, Dynamic Island and everything there. And then obviously on the bottom at start here, you're gonna be getting USB-C at the bottom compared to the traditional sort of lightning port we've had for donkeys now last sort of 10 years years or so you will get that USB-C port at the bottom what is really really good and obviously the data transfer is far quicker it's only about 480 megabits on here where it's up to 10 gigabits on here obviously if you're using the correct cable and everything like that on here but let's have a look then at some of the other bits and pieces straight away the first thing i'm going to say is obviously the metal here is titanium on the 15 pro max so it's a far better quality material stainless steel is still good don't get me wrong it's been you know something they've had on their phones for years but obviously we've evolved now to titanium the only one down there with titanium it is a worse fingerprint magnet than what stainless steel ever was so if you remember if everything was sticking to your stainless steel well bad news titanium is even worse but looking at the buttons here and looking at the side here there's not much difference in it the only thing that you probably actually notice is that we actually have a more of an angle here it's a smoother rounder edge where we've got much more of a sharper edge on the iphone 12 so that definitely feels better in the hand here i'm just trying to unlock my phone with my fingers there by accident so just holding them yeah definitely this does feel more comfortable the iphone 15 even though it's not that noticeable it really really obviously does make a big big difference um like i said the power button still the same everything here is basically the same on this side but if we flip it over now and have a look at the other side here then there are some differences i'm obviously in the uk so we have sim cards still unlike you guys in the us sorry you've all gone to e-sim whether that's a good thing or a bad thing it's your own opinion but we do still have that silent rocker here um but where we've got the action button what can be programmed and then we've also got the volume rockers they're basically the same thing here too and then looking on the back here the material does feel very similar i'm going to say on both these glass frosted backs the ceramic glass both of them exactly the same there but you can actually notice and I will talk about this a little bit later on, is that the actual camera lens here, the square, is far smaller than what we got with the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So it's quite fascinating, really, that as much as these phones on the face of it look very, very similar, there are some big upgrades. Just look, look here, I'm just holding them here. Look how big these cameras are here on the iPhone 15 Pro Max compared to the 12 Pro Max. You can see the real differences there. Like I said, the way how you hold this phone as well is far more comfortable, different materials, USB-C, ProMotion, Dynamic Island. There is so much just on the face of this iPhone that you can see compared to this phone here. I forgot even the action button too. So then, guys, if 
this video has already convinced you to get yourself an iPhone 15 Pro Max or upgrade to an iPhone 15 Pro Max, you probably want to get yourself a new case with it. And that is where Rhino Shield comes in. Just like this case I'm sporting right here, you can actually get a customized case for your own look for your iPhone 15 Pro Max. Rhino Shield provide a different variety of different cases and with their shock spread technology, your phone could be even protected from being dropped up to 11 foot. But you can also get cases like this one here, what has MagSafe connections on the back. And in fact, the actual MagSafe is two times stronger than the standard one what's inside the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And this case here specifically is the anti-yellowing case. Rhino Shield have actually made this case 23% thinner and yet it still offers the same impact protection. But if having a clear case is not your thing, you can always get a full coverage case like this one that we have right here, what is called the solid suitcase. What is in this lovely blue color and also we have it in this green kind of color too, but you've also still got the MagSafe connector inside it and it feels really comfortable in your hand too. So much so that the solid suit has actually evolved with rounded edges and has a slightly curved back for the best grip yet. Then there is the modular case right here, which gives you the best of both worlds. This case is called the Mod NX. So as you can see here, you've actually got that full protection here, but also you do have that kind of card sort of plastic back here to see the full color of the iPhone around the back. And that if you did drop your iPhone, say on the side, most likely, then basically it'd still be protected because at the end of the day, you do have that ridged edge around here and also on the other side too, to stop your screen or the back glass being broken, what is really, really awesome. Then there's also screen protectors, as you can see here, what you can apply onto the front glass of your phone to give you that extra layer of protection. So as you can see here on my desk, there is a case for everyone with customizable camera rings, button, colors, and thousands of print designs too. And best of all, Rhino Shield right now, because they're sponsoring this video, they want to offer you 10% off your first purchase of a case. And all you have to do is enter in the code on display right now, what is Mac Talks Tech. But let's now move on to the actual cameras on these phones. Because obviously a lot of you guys use your cameras quite daily and you'll want to know what the differences are. If you take some snaps on this phone here compared to your older iPhone 12 Pro Max, what kind of sort of level of detail Details, can you expect and differences will you actually see if you are upgrading for that reason so let's get started with that so starting here then with the iPhone 12 Pro Max so obviously we're at 0.5 zoom and by the way there was a lot of light glare coming into this today I don't know why but it's just the way how the iPhone 12 Pro Max is taking these photos as you can see at one time zoom then also at two time zoom five time zoom and then also 10 times zoom too. But then switching over to the iPhone 15 Pro Max, starting at 0.5, then going up to one time zoom, and a two time zoom, and you can see the light glare is not as apparent here on the 15 Pro Max. And then obviously a five time zoom, and then finally a 10 times zoom. So there's definitely some differences there. Then we've got the portrait pick, and just show you how they're doing. So that there's the 12 Pro Max. And then we've got the 15 Pro Max. Next of all, we have some nighttime photography, starting out here with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And obviously this is a normal standard wide one times, but I've also taken a five times zoom shot here too. And you can see, yeah, it's not the clearest, is it? But switching over to an iPhone 15 Pro Max, here we go one times, you can see a big difference straight away. And then here we are at a five times zoom, obviously the telephoto lens. Yeah, there is a big difference here as well. And next of all, let's now do some video zooming, starting then with the iPhone 13 Pro Max to begin with. And just like that, the weather has changed. Here we are on a miserable day now in the UK. But let's get started then with this zoom test. So I'm at 0.5 here on the iPhone 12 Pro Max at 4K, 60 frames per second. And I'll be doing the same also on the other phone too, on the 15 Pro Max. But let's get started. Let's start with a bit of a zoom then. This is up to a one-time zoom. And that's it. We can only stop at 1.5 and we have to stop the video. And then we have to start the video again and we can be at one time zoom now. This is the main one. And then we can keep on pinching up again. And we can get all up to a three time zoom. 
And then guess what? We have to stop the video again. Then switch over to the 2.5 telephoto, because that's all you had on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And then you can keep zooming again. And as you can see, we can go all the way up to a seven times digital zoom. What's okay, but when we see the iPhone 15 Pro Max, let's see how far that can go in comparison. So now we're on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And we've got the tree in center. Let's see then. So we can actually go all the way up to a one time zoom. That's what we're at now. We can go up to 1.5, two times zoom. And we're going to keep on going. We're now at three times zoom. Notice we're not stopping the video here. We can keep on going. We're now at a five times zoom. So this is now the telephoto here. That's what we're on. So five times. So we can keep on cropping, keep on going. We're now at 10 times zoom. And we can keep on going. And we're now at a 15 times zoom. And we can basically stop there. We cannot go more than a 15 times zoom. But that is basically double of what you can get with the iPhone 12 Pro Max on the digital zoom. But look how much clarity there is. You can see much more greenery on there than what we could see on, say, the iPhone 12 Pro Max in comparison. Obviously, loads of other modes have been added, like the macro um, capability. And the other thing as well, we've got cinematic mode that wasn't available, but is available on here. You know, I could keep on going. And I think my favorite one is something what I even said with the iPhone 13 Pro Max was to do with the zoom capability. It's crazy how you can actually do all that zooming up and you don't have to stop start the video to change over on this phone here. Whereas this one, you have to stop start on the kind of zoom levels what's really quite ridiculous when you think about it that you can do that i love that smooth transition and talk about the zoom obviously it's quite funny now to think that with the iphone 15 plus that you can see right here that we actually have now got that two times telephoto zoom inside it and back here on the iphone 12 pro max that had just basically been added into this phone at that time and you can see that obviously zoom goes all the way up to a far better image and obviously even the digital zoom is far better too in videos and also taking photos as well. So next of all, let's now move over then to opening common apps on both of these phones and let's see how sort of slow this phone has got over those years because obviously this phone here came out with I think it was iOS 14 or well, iOS 17 now. So let's see how well the chip, the A14 chip is handling all of those updates now inside it compared to the, the iPhone 15 Pro Max with its A17 Pro chipset. So then let's open up the same apps then on both of these phones. Let's start with, let's say, Geekbench. But I just wanted to show you here, after I open up Geekbench on both of these phones, the iPhone 15 Pro Max takes a little longer, but I just want to show you here. Can you see there's no other apps running in the background there? So that's our first app we're going to open up. I'm also going to open and Tutu as well. I think we've got it here. So that's the same app app let's come out of that again so there we go we can see the geek bench running in the background uh let's do 3d mark and also let's do 3d mark 2 so they're both running there uh let's now open up something else let's open up say maps so i'm gonna open up that one we've got maps there and then we've also got maps figures on the front page here um and everything oh here we go so i've just only recently reset this phone so i'm that while using the app yeah all the usual bits and pieces that's now running there so we want to minimize those ones we've got maps running let's now get the calculator open there and the calculator open there and then let's minimize those ones down again i also want to get the music app and the music app on that one so we're just going to close those ones down uh why not let's get the weather open and the weather open and you know well, now we're using the app. That's that one down. Um, and let's have a look. Yep, there we go. Let's say even the App Store. The App Store sounds good. But obviously, I'll well, catch the internet a second on this one. But let's get the App Store uh, open on here. Tell you what, I know why. Because I've got that switched off. So there we go. That's all there. Let's turn put that one there. And then finally, let's also open up the cameras too on both of these. So there we go. We've got both the cameras open. And let's just flick them. Let's go all the way back to Geekbench. And let's see how easy it is to open that one up. Let's have a look. Yep, yeah, no problems there whatsoever. Let's uh, 
flick back let's now i don't know let's go to say maps uh, i'm gonna go right round to maps and let's open that no differences really there whatsoever uh let's try something different let's try two two let's have a look yeah no problems there opens up no problems nice and speedy i think the conclusion is that just generally speaking Apple like to optimize their apps and their software, even when, you know, the actual phone is a few years old. So that was quite interesting, considering that the iPhone 12 Pro Max obviously has slower RAM inside it, and also obviously the chipset inside it is far slower too, but there wasn't that much difference in it. Obviously the 15 Pro Max did pull out in front, but you're not going to, I'm going to say, notice that difference, I'm probably going to say. And I think this is what Apple like to do now with their phones. This is why I think they only support phones up to a certain age. So like they only support up to like the iPhone 10s and the 10R or X. XR, whatever you want to call them, and then they sort of abandon them because they know that their operating system is going to get too slow for their users, and they don't want users to have that kind of experience. So personally, I think it's been kind of done on purpose that they know there's a threshold. When it's starting to really get noticeable that it's getting slower, they're going to cut it off. And I think they do that with their sort of testing and redefinements when they bring out a new iOS every year. But let's have a look at the actual benchmarking here, and let's see what the actual differences are here. So we're going to run Geekbench 6 just to show you guys here. There's nothing running in the background as you just seen there. So let's open up Geekbench 6 on both of these phones. Obviously, I've ran it on the iPhone 15 Pro Max a few times. So let's do the CPU benchmark already. Uh, let's see what the difference is. So let's start the test and let's see what the difference is then between the speeds on both of these phones. And there we go, the test is complete and straight away you can see some differences here. Obviously, we're talking about almost a third more difference, just under a third, I'd probably say probably about a 30% difference um, in single core performance here. And then the same here with the multi-core score, you can see there is a big difference there too. We are talking probably around about a 30%, 35% kind of sort of speed increase right here just in the multi-core score. So that is definitely a difference. And just to show you here, just the comparisons of everything that we've got here, we've got the single core scores. You can see them exactly where the iPhone 12 Pro Max, this one here sits at 2,166. The average is 2,045. So it did quite well there, mainly because we don't have so many apps running on this phone because like I said reset it like fresh out the box but obviously like here with the A15 as well you can see definitely way ahead there but even with the multi-core score it's quite interesting to see exactly what we have right here the actual differences are pretty amazing there so you know we've got 7,577 that is closing in on the M1 chipset on the iPad Air down here and don't get me wrong obviously the multi-core score is done very well what's most interesting I find is that this device here as you can see it says it's 5300 and to be honest that is not too far behind the normal A15 chipset what's in the normal iPhone 14 and even here look down here we've got the iPhone 13 with the A15 normal inside it we're actually beating the averages right there so yeah it's still quite a powerful iPhone quite a powerful chip what's actually inside this phone but I think the main thing to take away, is there a difference? Definitely. Going back to the original results here, there is a big difference in both of these. Definitely something that you would probably notice if you were loading up a 3D game. This phone here will easily start up a game more quicker. And talk about actual games, let's now go back then and we're going to actually run a GPU test this time. So we're going to start the GPU benchmark and let's have a look then see what the difference is there. So I'm going to run the GPU benchmark and the GPU benchmark and let's see what happens. And there we have it. The scores have completed. Look at the differences that we have right here. It's absolutely amazing in what we have with the GPU performance. What you've got to remember is the A14 only had four GPU cores, whereas the A17 Pro actually has six core GPU to start with. Then, for example, it's been 
tailored up it's fast on a three nanometer die then also it can handle like ray tracing was giving a lot of points there in the graphics but you can see you know we are talking around about a 40 percent increase here in speed you will notice this if you load up a 3d game you're going to notice that this phone is going to be able to handle that far quicker and also if you're playing a full 3d game the frames per second it's going to be far smoother on this phone than this phone here so just on that alone if you wanted to do an upgrade mainly because you do like to play games you are going to see difference obviously if you're playing things like cut the rope and angry birds you know all of those old school games probably not nothing there but anything what's a newish game and also a lot of those new 3d games were apple about to bring out like resident evil village on here and also the new assassin's creed there's a few others as well that on their way you will notice a massive massive difference on this one right here on the iphone 15 pro max compared to what you got on the iphone 12 pro max so that was quite fascinating to actually see the actual differences there and the benchmarking. We're talking around about on average about a 40% increase kind of in power we have here with the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Obviously the newer engine, well, that is way faster. But obviously like with the CPU, GPU, yeah, there is a big difference here. We've got a six core GPU. This is still sporting a four core GPU. The actual CPU is a very similar architecture, apart from that obviously this one runs here on a five nanometer die on the A, 14 chipset whereas now on the a17 pro on a three nanometer die so there are going to be their differences there so here comes the big question is it worth upgrading an iphone 12 pro max to an iphone 15 pro max or even an iphone 12 pro my answer to that would be yes it is if you're looking for a new iphone and you think yeah i'd like to have a new iphone am i going to see some differences here I think there is enough to say, yes, there is. But don't get me wrong, what I would also say about this phone, if you're thinking of keeping it just for one more year, there's nothing wrong with that either. What I will say is though, most likely with iOS 18, this phone is running out of support. It won't run out of support with iOS 18. I think it'll run out of support with iOS 19. That'll probably be its last year with that. So that is something to also consider too. But the main point of view, what I'm trying to say is if you want to have that new phone feeling that you've leapt up, Remember, you've got all the upgrades, 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max, 14 Pro, 14 Pro Max, and then obviously the ones with the 15 and 15 Pro Max. You know, like I said, you don't have Dynamic Island. You don't have the Pro Motion Display, Action Button, USB-C, so much more. The way how it even feels in your hands. There is loads and loads of updates inside, basically, this phone here, the 15 Pro Max, to what you've even got with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So, yes, I would definitely consider upgrading if you're up for it. And with that, guys, it's time to wrap up this video. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. And also, if you want to hear the latest Apple news, reviews, and comparisons like we've done today, make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.